The sterile walls of the doctor's office echoed with the hum of fluorescent lights. The air felt thick as I sat on the uncomfortable vinyl chair, hands fidgeting with the edges of a glossy magazine that I couldn't bring myself to read. The door creaked open and the oncologist entered, a somber expression etched across his face. Mr. Thompson, he began, his voice carrying the weight of the news he was about to deliver. I'm afraid the biopsy results confirm late-stage Hodgkin's lymphoma. The words hung in the air, a heavy cloud of disbelief settling over the room. I glanced at the doctor, searching for a hint of reassurance, but his eyes revealed only sympathy. It was as if the world had shifted, and I found myself on the precipice of an abyss. Late stage, I stammered, the words catching in my throat. How did this happen? I've always taken care of myself, had regular checkups. The oncologist nodded, his expression empathetic. Cancer is unpredictable, Mr. Thompson. Sometimes it strikes without rhyme or reason, but we do have treatment options. We'll start with rigorous chemotherapy to give you the best chance. As the doctor outlined the treatment plan, my mind raced with thoughts of the life I knew slipping away. How would I tell Janet and Layla? How would our family endure this unforeseen storm? Later that evening, I sat Janet and Layla down, the weight of the news heavy in the room. Janet's eyes filled with tears, and Layla's face turned pale as I revealed the diagnosis. The room fell silent, the reality of the situation sinking in. Janet finally spoke, her voice trembling. We'll fight this together, won't we, honey? She said, reaching for my hand. Layla, usually a bundle of teenage energy, whispered, Of course, Dad, we're a team. Little did we know, that team would face challenges we never imagined, and the foundations of our family would be tested in ways we never anticipated. The weight of the diagnosis hung over our family like a storm cloud, dark and unrelenting. Janet and Layla sat on a living room couch, their expressions a mix of anticipation and fear as I prepared to share the devastating news that would alter the course of our lives. I took a deep breath, glancing at the family photos on the wall, snapshots frozen in time, capturing moments of joy and laughter. How I wished we could freeze time again, preserving the innocence we had known before the word cancer entered our vocabulary. Janet, Layla, I began, my voice steady but carrying the weight of the impending revelation. I got the results from the biopsy today, and it's not what any of us expected. I have late-stage Hodgkin's lymphoma. A heavy silence settled in the room, broken only by the distant hum of traffic outside. Janet's eyes welled up with tears, and Layla's hand tightened around a throw pillow. The news hung in the air like an ominous presence. Janet finally spoke, her voice quivering, late stage, but you're strong, healthy. How did this happen? The air seemed to thicken as I explained the uncertainty of cancer, how it could strike even the healthiest among us. Layla's face reflected a mix of confusion and concern, and she cast a quick glance at her mother, seeking reassurance. We'll fight this, right, Dad? Layla said, her attempt at optimism tinged with an underlying worry. I nodded, squeezing their hands, we'll fight it together. The doctor has recommended rigorous chemotherapy. It won't be easy, but we're a family, and we'll face this head on. As the reality of the situation settled in, Janet wiped away tears and nodded in agreement. We're with you, no matter what, she said, her voice a mixture of determination and vulnerability. Little did we know that these words would be put to the test in the challenging chapters that lay ahead, a journey that would unravel the fabric of our family and force us to confront the true meaning of commitment and support. Chemotherapy days blurred into each other, creating a relentless cycle of exhaustion and nausea. The once familiar routine of our lives had been replaced by the sterile and unforgiving rhythm of medical appointments. Janet and Layla, initially pillars of support, found themselves navigating uncharted territory. One evening, after a particularly draining session, I sank into the living room couch, the weariness evident in every fiber of my being. Janet, her eyes reflecting a mix of concern and exhaustion, approached with a tray of bland hospital food. How are you feeling, love? She asked, her voice soft but laden with the weight of our new reality. I mustered a weak smile, tired, but hanging in there. The doctor said this is all part of the process. Layla, attempting to maintain a sense of normalcy, chimed in, I looked up some recipes that might be good for you during chemo. We can try them together. Her effort was touching, but beneath the surface, I could sense a growing strain. 
The once eager expressions of care were slowly transforming into a wearied sense of obligation. As days turned into weeks, the toll on my body became more evident. The chemotherapy's debilitating effects made simple tasks Herculean endeavors. Yet, despite my struggles, I tried not to burden them too much. One evening, as I mustered the energy to join them for dinner, I couldn't ignore the signs of agitation in their eyes. Layla's once vibrant spirit seemed dimmed, and Janet's attempts at conversation felt forced. Are you both okay? I finally asked, breaking the uneasy silence that had settled over the room. Janet sighed, her shoulders slumping, it's just, it's a lot, you know. We're trying our best, but it feels like we're drowning. I felt a pang of guilt, realizing the toll my illness was taking on the family dynamics. I never wanted it to be like this, I admitted, my voice heavy with regret. Layla, her gaze averted, added, We love you, Dad, but it's hard. We never signed up for this, and it's changing everything. The admission hung in the air, a stark reminder of the invisible wedge that had begun to wedge itself between us. Little did we know that this growing strain would become the harbinger of more significant challenges, a harbinger of the family unraveling that lay ahead. The subtle shifts in our household became more pronounced with each passing day. The initial unity in facing my illness had given way to an unspoken tension. As my dependence on their support grew, the enthusiasm from Janet and Layla waned. One evening, after a particularly grueling day of chemotherapy, I found myself struggling to even lift a spoon to my mouth. Janet, once the embodiment of unwavering support, hesitated at the doorway of the kitchen. Layla, can you help your father? I need to take a moment, she muttered, her weariness evident in every step. Layla's response, once immediate and filled with concern, was now tinged with an air of reluctance. Can't he manage on his own for once? I have stuff to do. The word stung, a stark departure from the promises of solidarity we had made at the beginning of this harrowing journey. As I attempted to navigate the kitchen on my own, the silence in the air hung heavy with unspoken frustrations. Days turned into weeks, and the strain manifested in the smallest gestures. Janet's once compassionate touch became mechanical, and Layla's eagerness to help dwindled. Even simple requests for assistance were met with sighs and averted eyes. One evening, after mustering the strength to attend a family gathering in our living room, the disconnection was palpable. Janet busied herself with chores, and Layla, lost in her phone, seemed oblivious to the heaviness in the air. I finally mustered the courage to address the growing distance. Is everything okay? I asked, my voice barely above a whisper. Janet, avoiding eye contact, sighed. It's just, we're tired. This wasn't what we signed up for. Layla, her eyes glued to the screen, added, You're always so needy. It's suffocating. The words hung in the air, a painful acknowledgement of the erosion of the support system that was meant to carry us through. Little did I know that this was merely the prelude to a heartbreaking decision that would shatter the illusion of an unbreakable family bond. The breaking point came like an unexpected storm, tearing through the fragile facade of our once close family. It was an early morning, a day of a particularly early chemo appointment, and I was already feeling the weight of fatigue as I faced the daunting task of preparing for the day. I called up to Janet, hoping for the usual assistance, but the weariness in her voice was palpable. Can't you just take an Uber? I'm tired, she suggested. Shocked by her response, I hesitated before reluctantly agreeing. As I waited for the Uber to arrive, I couldn't shake the sinking feeling that something fundamental had shifted in our relationship. The Uber driver, a kind stranger, filled the void left by the absence of family support. She not only ensured I safely reached the hospital, but even offered to drive me back home after the treatment. Grateful for the kindness of a stranger, I returned home hoping for a sense of normalcy. However, that day marked a turning point. The signs of agitation from Janet and Layla had reached a crescendo. I had become acutely aware of a growing reluctance whenever I asked for their assistance. Even basic tasks like fetching a glass of water or getting some fresh air were met with visible frustration. That evening, after a few hours of rest, I mustered the courage to confront the unsettling behavior. The atmosphere in the room was charged with tension as I asked. Is there something you want to talk about? It feels like there's a chill in the air lately. Janet, with a heavy sigh, admitted, We're overwhelmed. This is too much and we didn't sign up for it. Layla, timidly, chimed in, I didn't expect you to be so needy and demanding during your illness. The words landed like a blow, 
the realization that my health struggles had become a burden to my own family sinking in. It was a painful acknowledgement of the shifting dynamics that had taken place during my fight against cancer. Decisions needed to be made, and a conversation about possible solutions arose. What can we do to make things easier? I proposed trying to salvage the remains of our family unity. The idea of hiring a nurse was met with reluctance, but eventually, they agreed. The promise of assistance seemed to offer a glimmer of hope amidst the growing darkness. Little did I know that this compromise would be the catalyst for further challenges as family tensions spiraled into deeper conflicts. The introduction of a nurse into our lives was meant to be a solution, a way to bridge the growing gap within our family. However, it quickly became apparent that this decision only fueled the existing tensions. The nurse, a combination of sweetness and sternness, arrived with the promise of aiding me through the challenging days of chemotherapy. She diligently ensured I never missed an appointment, managed my medication schedule, and even crafted a comprehensive care plan. While the doctors were pleased with my progress, the family dynamics continued to unravel. One evening, as the nurse tended to my needs, Janet's frustration reached its peak. This is ridiculous. I can take care of you. I don't need a stranger in our home, she exclaimed, her tone sharp with resentment. I attempted to reason, Janet, it's about lightening the load for everyone. We agreed that things were becoming too overwhelming. She folded her arms, her eyes narrowing in defiance. I didn't agree to be replaced. I'm your wife, for better or worse. Layla, siding with her mother, added, you're letting a stranger take over, Dad. It's not right. Desperation edged into my voice as I suggested. If you're willing to take on the responsibilities, we can part ways with the nurse. I only brought her in because I thought it would help. Janet, visibly displeased, shot back. I shouldn't have to do everything for you. You should do more for yourself. I tried to explain. There are days when I can barely lift my head, Janet. I'm not doing this to burden you. I just need support. In a fit of rage, she stormed upstairs, slamming doors behind her. I chose to ignore her tantrum, realizing that her negativity would only hinder my recovery. The nurse continued her duties with a calm professionalism that contrasted sharply with the turmoil brewing within our home. The decision to bring in a nurse, intended to ease the burden, had instead become a catalyst for deeper conflicts. Little did I know that this contentious compromise was only the beginning of the fractures that would ultimately redefine the dynamics of our family. Amidst the growing discord in my household, my brother, a beacon of hope, stepped in with an unconventional yet seemingly viable solution. He suggested bringing in a friend named Kara to provide the support that my wife and daughter were increasingly unwilling to offer. My brother's call came as a relief, and I found myself intrigued by the possibility of a fresh start. Kara, a friend in need, soon arrived, bringing with her a mix of determination and warmth. Her presence marked a departure from the strained atmosphere that had permeated the house. As we settled into this new arrangement, my brother's insight proved invaluable. One evening, as I sat with Kara discussing the day's events, he called to check in on us. How's everything going? He asked, genuine concern evident in his voice. I sighed, Kara has been a godsend, but the tension with Janet and Layla remains. They've distanced themselves even more. My brother, ever pragmatic, responded, sometimes, change is necessary for healing. Focus on your recovery and let them find their way. It's a challenging time for everyone. Kara, who had overheard the conversation, chimed in, I'm here to help in any way I can. We'll get through this together. Despite the reassurances, doubts lingered. The fracture in my family seemed irreparable, and I couldn't shake the feeling of abandonment. Little did I know that Kara's presence would soon become more than just a temporary solution, transforming the dynamics of our household in unexpected ways. Life post-recovery had settled into a semblance of normalcy in my new home. Yet, Tranquility was short-lived as the echoes of my past began to haunt me. One day, returning from a chemotherapy session, I was greeted not by the quietude of my surroundings, but by a moving truck parked ominously in front of my house. Janet and Layla had returned, not with open arms or remorseful hearts, but with a determination that sent shivers down my spine. As I approached, questions hung in the air, unanswered and unasked. They informed me coldly that they were moving out, heading to their mother's place. Why now? After all this time? I questioned, my voice trembling with a mix of exhaustion and hurt. Janet, with a dismissive wave of her hand, responded, We need space. 
this isn't working for any of us. The timing was calculated right after my chemotherapy sessions when they knew I'd be utterly spent and unable to communicate effectively. It felt cruel, a deliberate act to push me into further isolation during my weakest moments. In search of clarity, I turned to Layla. Is this what you want, Layla? Do you truly want to live with your mother? Her response struck like a dagger to the heart. It's just too difficult to live with you, Dad, she said, her voice cold and detached. Watching them leave, tears welled up in my eyes. It was precisely what I had feared when my chemo journey began, feeling unwanted and abandoned in the midst of my emotional turmoil. In the weeks that followed, the silence from Janet and Layla was deafening. I missed them, but it seemed I was the only one feeling that way. They didn't bother to call or check up on me. Instead, I found myself grappling with the aftermath of their departure and the sense of abandonment that lingered. One day, I received a call from my mother-in-law, who lived two states away. I'm not pleased with you bringing another woman into my daughter's house, she asserted, her disapproval evident. Choosing the high road, I explained, I needed help, and the level of assistance I required exceeded what your daughter was willing to provide. The nurse's presence is temporary, only for the duration of my remaining chemotherapy. She remained unconvinced but eventually left me alone, a temporary reprieve from the tumult that had become my life. Little did I know, the tranquility was a deceptive calm before the storm, as the harassment from my past would soon rear its ugly head and thrust my life into an unforeseen legal battle. The peace in my new home was shattered when, on a seemingly ordinary day, I noticed some unusual activity around the house. Dorothy, my kind neighbor, informed me that there were people snooping around, knocking on doors, and even waiting in their car. Alarmed by this intrusion, I realized it was my wife and daughter, returning to a past they had willingly abandoned. Concerned, I called my brother, the voice of reason in this storm. He informed me that Janet and Layla had been harassing Kara and her roommate at my old house. It was a revelation that left me both angry and perplexed. Fueled by this distressing information, I decided to confront the invaders. When I approached my house, the scene was chaotic. Windows were shattered, and my neighbors were trying to restrain Janet, who had been causing a ruckus for a while. You abandoned us. I have every right to be here, she shouted, her voice dripping with resentment. I responded calmly, I filed for divorce months ago. I asked you to leave, remember? This is my house now, and you have no right to be here. Layla, tears streaming down her face, interjected, Dad, I need money for college. You can't just cut us off like this. My patience wore thin, your daughter was fine with abandoning me too. I'm ready to give up all my parental rights to you. You should have thought of that before you abandoned me. The reality of the situation struck hard. The woman who had vowed to stand by me in sickness and health was causing havoc in my life. I felt no sympathy for them as they were loaded into the back of a police car. In the aftermath, as I cleaned up the mess they left behind, I couldn't help but reflect on the broken promises and shattered vows. The legal consequences were set in motion. Janet and Layla were being charged with vandalism, attempted break-in, and attempted assault. Layla, being a minor, received community service, but Janet was facing a more severe outcome as her actions were deemed premeditated. I contemplated getting a restraining order, a shield against the storm of their unwarranted return. It was a decision that would provide a respite from the chaos and, hopefully, pave the way for a new beginning. Little did I know that the seeking of solace through legal means would be the final chapter in this tumultuous saga, a chance for closure and a path toward rebuilding my life without the lingering shadows of the past.